Welcome to a lesson on the orthogonality of eigenfunctions. Something that is very useful in the next section is the orthogonality property of the eigenfunctions. This is an analog of the following fact about eigenvectors of a matrix. A matrix is called symmetric if matrix A is equal to the transpose of matrix A. Recall to find the transpose of matrix we interchange the rows and columns. The eigenvectors of two distinct eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are orthogonal. Recall vectors that are orthogonal are perpendicular. The differential operators we are dealing with act much like a symmetric matrix. We therefore get the following theorem. Suppose that x1 of t and x2 of t are two eigenfunctions of the problems 4.1 through 4.3 in the blue box below for two different eigenvalues, lambda1 and lambda2. Then they are orthogonal in the sense that the integral from a to b of x1 of t times x2 of t dt is equal to zero. The terminology comes from the fact that the integral is a type of inner product. We will expand on this in the next section. The theorem has a very short, elegant proof, which we will now show. We begin with the following two equations, x1 double prime plus lambda 1 x1 equals zero, and x2 double prime plus lambda 2 x2 equals zero. We multiply the first equation by x2, which is shown in blue on the right, and then we multiply the second equation by x1, which again is shown on the right, and then we subtract. So subtracting the two equations, we have x2 x1 double prime minus x2 double prime x1, and then plus lambda 1 x1 x2 minus lambda 2 x1 x2 equals zero. And now we move the two terms that don't contain a lambda to the right, which gives us lambda 1 x1 x2 minus lambda 2 x1 x2 equals x2 double prime x1 minus x2 x1 double prime. And now on the left, we factor out the common factor of x1, x2, which gives us the last line here on the left, which is a difference of lambda one and lambda two times x1, x2 equals x2 double prime x1 minus x2 x1 double prime. Now that we have this equation, we integrate both sides of the equation with respect to t from a to b, and we can factor out the constant lambda one minus lambda two on the left. And now focusing on the right, the integrand function is equal to the derivative of x2 prime x1 minus x2 x1 prime. Let's verify this on the right. If we differentiate this difference, we need to apply the product rule twice, which gives us x2 prime x1 prime plus x1 x2 double prime, and then we have minus the sum of x2 x1 double prime and x1 prime x2 prime. Removing the parentheses, we have x2 prime x1 prime plus x1 x2 double prime minus x2 x1 double prime minus x1 prime x2 prime. Notice the first and last terms are opposites, which leaves us with x1 x2 double prime minus x2 x1 double prime, which is equivalent to the original integrand function of x2 double prime x1 minus x2 x1 double prime. And now the integral undoes a derivative, and therefore the antiderivative is just x2 prime x1 minus x2 x1 prime. And now from here, big F of B minus big F of A is equal to zero. This last inequality is true because of the boundary conditions. For example, if we consider the problem 4.1, which is shown below, which has conditions x of A equals zero and x of B equals zero, then it must be true that x1 of A equals x1 of B equals x2 of a equals x2 of b all equals zero, and therefore it follows that big F of b minus big F of a must be zero, meaning x2 prime x1 minus x2 x1 prime is zero for both a and b. And then back on the left side of the equation, since lambda one doesn't equal lambda two, the theorem follows the integral from a to b of x1 of t times x2 of t dt equals zero. Now that we have the proof, let's go back and read the theorem one more time. Suppose x1 of t and x2 of t are two eigenfunctions of the problems 4.1 through 4.3 shown below for two different eigenvalues, lambda one and lambda two. Then they are orthogonal in the sense that the integral from a to b of x1 of t times x2 of t dt is equal to zero. I hope you found this helpful.